So I'm heading to Deeply Coffee. This is where I do a lot of my meetings with Chris, my assistant. Uh, this morning, while I was sitting with the Lord, I was thinking of Hebrews. The scripture says, he who comes to God must believe that he is. And this word for he is, is present indicative. It's singular present indicative, which means it is indicative of his presence, the presence of the one. So when we come to God, it is by faith that we slip into the awareness of his person. The bliss and the glory and the sweetness of his presence that we experience is all based upon the indicative presence, the presence of the Lord by faith. It's as easy as this. Lord, I believe you are here and you slip right into the experience of it. I'm here with Chris at Deeply. We got some schools of his presence coming up soon and it's been amazing. Me and Chris were talking about how experiencing the presence of the Lord every day is real Christianity. Without this, we're outside of salvation. Without the experience of his person, that's not salvation, right? If we don't have Absolutely. his presence, then how can we say we have Him? Mm -hmm. If you don't have Him, you don't have His presence. If we're saved from anything, we're saved from a light apart from His presence. And a lot of people today, they're like, oh, let's go over here. A lot of people today are living their lives independent of the presence, literally faithful to and loving the idea of Jesus rather than the actual reality of His person. And so, it's important that we recognize this and believe that this is what the gospel is. To know, to see, to experience, to believe in, and to be empowered by the person of Jesus Christ. And, and experience is necessary. And experience is what knowing Jesus actually is. Without experience, there is no knowing of Jesus. We're gonna do a quick video here. Look at these. Uh, Murals. Yeah. You took a picture with Daniel Marincheco last time with you. Remember? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, the, the scriptures promise us, in, in actually every letter that Paul has written, the scriptures show that the experience of Jesus is the essence of what this thing is all about. Phrases like joy unspeakable and full of glory, or peace that passes all understanding, or the fruit of the Spirit being love and joy and peace. We see them abounding in love and abounding in the presence of the Spirit. We see Ephesians, Paul is praying that they would be strengthened with power in their inner man. Also, he prays that their eyes will be enlightened to see. This is all experience. If you take experience out, then all we have left is an idea. Ideas can't save, ideas can't deliver. Deliverance is connected to the experience of a person. Uh, so Chris had to leave. I'm now here with Frankie Rodriguez, dear friend of mine from Chicago. He lives here in Orlando now. I'm gonna ask Frankie a little something. Okay. Have him share uh, a little something with you. Uh, one of the things the Lord's really been speaking to me lately is just the importance of us having accountability and a sense of responsibility for our words. I mean, we live in a prophetic culture and we're contending for the Lord to pour out His Spirit and for us to be able to prophesy and to prophesy well, but to prophesy well, there has to be a sense of responsibility for what we're saying. We live in a culture now where anybody can say, hey, God told me X, Y, Z, and then tomorrow, God told me A, B, C. And there's no sense of like, well, did God really say that? Did He not say that? Did He just decide to change His mind? Or whatever the case is. And you know, in 1 Corinthians 14, uh, when Paul is giving instructions to the church for the gatherings, he says, let two or three prophesy and let the others pass judgment. Let the others pass judgment. So if we're surrounding ourselves with people who know the Lord, who know his voice, then they should be able to say, hey, that sounds like the Lord is speaking. And if he is speaking, then we ought to respond to it because it's the Lord's voice. 
or they can say, hey, you know what? It's good, it's edifying, it's encouraging, but it doesn't really feel like that's what the Lord is saying to us right now or to you in your life. And I think that's just the importance of doing life with people that are, have been seasoned and tested and proven and not just you know, surrounding yourself with yes men who just are getting excited over prophetic activity. I think that's what it is. We get excited over prophetic activity and are not, not contending for just a real word from the Lord that transforms our lives because there's life attached to it because it comes from his, his mouth. Uh, and so, yeah, that's probably what the Lord's been speaking to me. It's just been really heavy on my heart lately. Okay, so if you, if, if, if you felt like that was for you and you feel like that was a good word and you felt like Frankie is anointed with the sweetness of the Lord to, <laughs> to speak into your life. Tell him in the comments below to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> to start giving these gems out of the experience of the Lord in his life. Man, I'm telling you, Frankie, start a YouTube channel. These people right here, these people right here, they want to hear from what's in here. Tell Eric to just let me hang out with him more often and I can just jump in on his. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, man. Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. Jesus speaks to us about prayer. And he says, When you pray, go into your most private room and closing the door, pray to your Father who sees in secret. And your Father who sees in secret, will reward you in the open. This actual text is what the entire course is going to be driving home. We must spend time with God. We're going to talk practically about how to experience Him, experiencing and enjoying God from the scriptures. Thank you so much for signing up. I know the Lord is going to do something incredible in your life.